it is a little bit out of context, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, previously on um, thing. Um, previously on. Hopefully you can see this. I'm tilting the camera. Right. This is last week. <laughs> Previously on in treatment, I got a choice. Either I accept your superiority as if you're some kind of god, or I use my intelligence and do a little investigating. Yeah, you'd be real surprised. The kind of information you find out from a few phone calls. I found a hell of a god. A god whose wife is sleeping around behind his back. Whose daughter is fucking jockeys. And then Laura comes along, and you, you fall in love with that crazy slut. Mm, here we go. So, a week later, he turns up and he's like, wait, Doc wasn't sure who was going to show him. Oh, hi. Hey. I should never get the mail. Yet today, 30 seconds after the riots, you're sprinting down to the curb. What on earth would you be expecting? A love letter, maybe? I saw her, Paul. Who? Oh. Who? Oh? Laura, I saw her. W w what do you mean you saw her? I was taking out the trash and I saw her leaving. I thought you said she quit therapy. She did quit. Then what the hell was she doing here? Our father's in the hospital. And um, she called me and asked me if she could come in. What should I have said, Kate? Uh, I'm sorry about this crisis with your father, but I've told my wife that you've quit therapy. No, that... you should have told me that she came back. It wasn't a social call. And if you wanted to find out what was going on, all you had to do was ask me, Kate. Don't you dare turn this around on me. What, you, th you, you think you deserve her? You've earned her? Because of what I did to you? Christ's sake. <laughs> well, lucky you. Say bye. Mm. Basically, his wife fucks around on him. And he's been wanting to fuck one of his patients. And now that he found out about the wife, he's like more tempted to fuck his patient. Well, yet again. shit out of you. And the second one? Yeah. The second one was an instinct that I learned in the, um, in the Navy. It's a survival tactic we teach. Think like the enemy. I'm trying to understand why you're all so afraid of me. When you say all, who would you be referring to? You and the rest of the world. Listen, I realize I threaten you. And that's where your aggression comes from. So in what way do you threaten us, do you think? You consider me a murderer. The last couple of weeks, I've been trying to figure out when people look in my eyes, in my hands, can they, can they tell that I have killed 42 people in the past 20 years? It's 42 human beings. You can't hide something like that, right? Something about me, they, they, they gotta see that. And it scares them. So do you think that there is something about you? Something obvious that people see? 
you probably wanted to strangle me the first time I walked through that door. In the last session, you finally got a chance to show your hatred for people like me. I think maybe that's how you see yourself, Alex. Maybe that's why you pushed me to such a, a violent place, so that I treat you the way that you think let me, you should be treated. Let me remind you, you attack me. Hmm. So what did you feel when I attacked you? What did I feel? A slight tremor in the wing. That's it. So n no big deal? No big deal. Mm -hmm. But Alex, I pushed you against the bookcase. I threw a coffee in your face. I'm just curious, what, what, what happened in your, in your body? What was going through your head? Wait, hold on a second. I just realized something. You, you haven't apologized yet. Okay, before anything else, you're supposed to say, I apologize, I'm sorry, it'll never happen again. Now, I've been here, what, five minutes so far, and I got nothing from you. You're right. <coughs> you're absolutely right. I apologize. It should not have happened. But I felt very offended by what you said. Offended? No, 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 that's not part of the deal. You know, I can say whatever the hell I want in here. That's the point of going to a shrink. You want me to censor every sentence or, or keep wondering if what I say might hurt you? Well, it's still like a relationship, Alex. There are, there are boundaries. I felt that you were out to hurt me, and I was very hurt. What offended you so much? I mean, it was all true, wasn't it? Well, you invaded my privacy. You talked about the people I love, and you spoke about them with contempt, and with what I felt was deliberate cruelty. Hmm. Okay. So I guess my therapy is over. Now, right? That's, that's, that's not what I said, Alex. No, but it's what you think. Listen, you're tired of taking the shit I give you all the time. And actually, I don't blame you. If I were you, I'd have gotten rid of me a long time ago. So is that why you say those things in the hopes that I would, uh, what, run away, kick you out? It's not gonna happen, Alex. <laughs> okay, you know you guys really do live in a bubble. You live in this world, you don't, you know, it's, it's all theories, you don't engage. You... What? Finish that thought. What, 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 what were you going to say? No, I just remember this dream I had. Um, I was on the ground. I was driving this little car on the uh, Iraqi International Airport Highway. They call it the Highway to Hell. And all of a sudden, I'm in Baghdad in this traffic jam. And above my head, I see this enemy plane. It's a Czech MiG. Or, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but this, this, this MiG is being followed by one of our jets, an F-16. Everyone's looking up, watching, and I say to myself, why isn't he shooting? Why didn't he blow him out of the sky? Now, maybe he's afraid that all the debris will fall on the people below, but, but I know in the dream, the orders are to take that fucker down, so they're flying, they're flying real close like this, and maneuvering, and our guy doesn't launch. All right, I've got to do on the part one, and we're right back with part two, if anyone's on the edge of their seat. Okay, and about it, but it's good stuff.